so what now? Well, you know, let's not exaggerate the importance of that strike. It's, it was a fender bender in military terms. You know, I fully support attacking ISIS from the air, using our air power. And by the way, Bill, I am convinced that Obama and his grad school groupies do not, they're out of touch with the American people. The, the idea that the American people don't want to hurt jihadis is nuts. I do not believe the American people have any objection to using air power to kill jihadis who are slaughtering Christians and other minorities. But the key point here is that when you do use American military power, it should be ferocious, hard-hitting. Otherwise, the jihadis or other enemies get to say, see, America couldn't hurt us. America's a paper tiger, and it only increases their strength. But one very good thing about Obama's decision, which I applaud to use military force, is that while we cannot destroy Islamic State terrorists from the air, we can't destroy the caliphate, we can degrade them and give encouragement to the Kurds and others who are fighting them, who right now are very discouraged. Right. So and I'm you're, glad so we're you're, doing something, but right, we got to do more. You're arguing that if you hit them, hit them hard, and yeah. you will help give encouragement to the others who are, who are frankly fighting the same group. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can't, again, pinprick strikes. And this goes back to the terrible mistake Bill Clinton made in the 90s when he felt like, well, I got to do something about Al-Qaeda, I'll make a show. He lobbed a few cruise missiles at an empty training camp, hit a couple oddball targets in Sudan, and declared victory. It strengthened Al-Qaeda because it showed that America, in their view, couldn't destroy them. So again, I am not, I, the military isn't the answer to every problem, but when you've got jihadis slaughtering Christians, burning to 1,800 year old churches, uh, attacking this harmless Yazidi minority, beheading uh, adults and even beheading children, you know, that's time for America to step up. It is our fight. And, you know, it's water under the bridge that we, sh we should have left troops in Iraq. Obama wouldn't. He has an aversion to all things military. But to paraphrase the late, great James Brown, when it comes to military operations, if you're going to do it, do it right, do it with soul. Well, uh, when you use a military, you mm -hmm. hit them hard. Um, yeah, and a lot of this stuff is it, it's history, right? We did not leave yeah. a force behind, okay? Yeah. So that's behind, and now we're looking forward to solutions and trying to figure out, you know, how you contain this group. And I don't know if you can go from town to town with air power and drive them back to the Syrian border and push them back into Syria and have a Saad deal with them. I mean, perhaps they are too far advanced for even that to yeah. happen. But you see the map, you see how much they control right now from Syria across that big barren desert into northern Iraq. I remember well, vividly what Bill Clinton said about his greatest regret, and that was the genocide in Rwanda. And, and that's out, let's point. maybe be clear before I ask the question yeah. on this. We are not there, and God forbid we go there. But when you look at the number of people on the run, it has to enter into your mind that it could be a possibility in northern Iraq today. Yeah, well, I, I personally believe that Bill Clinton probably called Obama on this because Bill Clinton has said that he feels the greatest remorse for not having acted early on in Rwanda. And so I would not be surprised if he, he nudged Obama on this. But at any rate, it is important. Um, we can't fix all the world's problems. I certainly understand that. The military is not the answer.